Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are going to be talking about the lack of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet news. I know there have been leaks and rumors and speculation as to when a new trailer is going to come, when a new Nintendo Direct is going to come with possible Scarlet and Violet footage, but it is now mid-July and we have yet to see any sort of trailer. So what is going on with the Pokemon Company and their marketing strategy for Scarlet and Violet, and is it similar to how they handled Legends Arceus? We have had two trailers for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet so far, ever since the games were announced back in February of this year. In February, with the announcement, of course, we got that first trailer for Scarlet and Violet, showing off the strange policeman investigating the room, which sent him into the world of Scarlet and Violet, and then eventually revealing the starter Pokemon. And then last month in June, at the start of the month, we got a trailer, not a presents, but a pre-announced trailer for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And it revealed a couple new Pokemon, some new information about the multiplayer features, and teased a potential gimmick. Since then, it is now July, and we really haven't gotten any new news. We've gotten a ton of leaks, some of which might be accurate, others might be complete fabrications. If you want to learn more about those leaks, uh, check out some other channels, check out some other podcasts. I will not be covering them here until there's concrete news, like genuine, it cannot be in doubt type leaks, or we get official trailers. But why has there been no news? If you look back into previous generations of Pokemon, Generation 6, Generation 7 specifically, they handled the hype cycle very differently from the way they've handled it in Generation 8 and onwards, and specifically the ender, the end point of Generation 8, the latter part of the generation. They've handled it differently. If you look at Pokemon Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, it was, once you got into the dog days of summer, trailers every other week, releasing new Alolan Pokemon, releasing new things about the evil team and about with Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, with Rainbow Rocket and what the post game would look like, revealing Ash and Ga uh, Red and Blue coming back in the battle tree. All of these things got revealed over the summer and then into the fall leading up to release. Sword and Shield was similar. There was the big Pokemon Nintendo Treehouse collaboration where Junichi Masuda and Shigeru Omori were on stage showing off the game. There were trailers in that month and then throughout the summer and leading up to release, you had trailers every couple weeks. But in the latter part of Generation 8, a lot of that changed. We didn't get a ton of trailers for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl until the middle of summer. And these games were announced in February, just like Scarlet and Violet have been since. Legends Arceus was also revealed at the same time as BDSP for Pokemon Day, and we didn't get substantial news for that game until August when we got a big Pokemon Presents. That was the beginning of the marketing cycle genuinely for Legends Arceus and BDSP. A lot of people felt at the time that it had to do with the state of the games. Maybe the games weren't as close as they previous have been. Maybe Game Freak, specifically with Legends Arceus, wanted a little bit more time to polish the game, and there were certainly some factors that would lead a lot of us to presume that that was accurate. The game, when it was originally shown off and what it looked like in the fall of last year, was dramatically improved. The game at release looked much, much more polished and refined than it did when we originally saw it. That little blurb at the bottom of the screen on a lot of gameplay trailers saying footage is not final was incredibly accurate for the latter part of Generation 8, for the Sinnoh return that we got. Maybe it wasn't just to do with how the game looked, however. Maybe this is Game Freak's new marketing strategy for their games. Giving out the announcement early in the year and then waiting a long time before drip feeding a little information at the start, usually around when Nintendo does their E3 festivities, which I want to come back to in a moment because I think it's relevant. And then at the end of the summer, really starting that big push. I think there's a lot of merit to this, mostly in how big of a franchise Pokemon is. I don't think it needs a year-long marketing push, much to the chagrin of content creators and fans who want to get a ton of new information consistently. I just don't think those two mindsets necessarily match up, and I think we're beginning to see it 
really fully realized with the announcement cycle for Scarlet and Violet. Now, before going further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel now, of course. Subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And check out the join tab, see if the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is always greatly appreciated. Who knows what this cycle looks like with a classic Nintendo Direct in June. We're now in the middle of July, as I mentioned before, and there is absolutely no sign of an early summer Nintendo Direct coming. They've been releasing information on other games that you would generally expect to see in a Direct on their own on separate days. We saw a new Kirby multiplayer game announced a couple days ago just on Nintendo Nintendo's social channels. We saw the release date and a brand new trailer for Bayonetta 3 released today as of the recording of this video. These are all things that generally would probably be in a Nintendo Direct, but we didn't get a Nintendo Direct in June. We got a Nintendo Direct Mini and it was mostly focused on third party games and there was a lot of really good stuff there, but there was nothing that you would expect to see in terms of major blowout announcements in a Nintendo Direct. We also have a lot of this year pretty much figured out already. This month, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 comes out. August, I believe, Splatoon 3 comes out, or that might be September, it might be late August, early September, it's, it's somewhere around there. October, Bayonetta 3 is releasing. I believe it's either the end of October or the beginning of November, Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope releases, and then also in November you have Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Breath of the Wild 2, the sequel to The Legend of Zelda that does not have an official title yet, is not due out for release until next year. One is guessing, one being me, that we're probably going to see it release in March to coincide with when Breath of the Wild originally came out on the Nintendo Switch, which was March 3rd, I believe, 2017, the same day that the Switch launched. I would have to bet that based on that, we're going to see a Breath of the Wild 2 trailer in September with a title and a big blowout and a release date given. But that's Nintendo's window. There wasn't much of a need for a Nintendo Direct this June, unless there's something big that they haven't been showing us. Generally, Pokemon likes to put their own trailers ahead of the Nintendo Directs and then re-emphasize what was revealed in those trailers in those Directs. If there's a treehouse, sometimes they also like to show off gameplay. None of that happened. We had the trailer. Could we see gameplay this month? I think it's entirely possible. I'd still bet on us seeing a trailer this month. But if this was a new strategy by the Pokemon company with Legends Arceus and BDSP last year, I think the more likely thing is a Pokemon Presents in August. Now, the leaks recently that a lot of people seem to think are credible, some very blurry screenshots, might change their plans because a lot of things came out and if it is accurate, it's a lot of information, a lot of Pokemon, a lot of the game that's been shown off, and who knows how that impacts their strategy. We'll see. We'll see in the coming days if that changes anything. If we get a trailer and we see things that are similar, if the leak is indeed accurate, then we're dealing with a different beast here, and we'll, I'll have another discussion video talking about how the Pokemon company can deal with leaks in the future, because I think it's a really interesting topic. I think they need to get ahead of leaks. That's just my opinion. But I don't think fan expectations match up with the marketing strategy. Pokemon is the biggest selling media franchise on the planet, or at least one of the biggest media franchises, and has been number one in years past. BDSP, a game that a lot of people in the community criticized for being poorly marketed and wasn't marketed early enough to engage a lot of the viewers and a lot of the audience, they are the best selling Pokemon remakes of all time. I understand that it's on the Switch and it's on a really big console, but you're dealing with a lot of heavy hitters in that lineup, like Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. And it is the best selling one with a marketing strategy that a lot of people in the community at the time last year, this time last year, and leading up to release felt was inadequate. Legends Arceus was a widely praised game that has sold over, I think now, 12 million copies for a single game, not a dual release. Their marketing strategy works. To say that it isn't what you want is fine. To say that you want information every two weeks from May to September to November is fine. I agree with you. I love seeing new gameplay of Pokemon, but to say that it's a marketing mistake on the part of the Pokemon company, I disagree. I want to see information and news as much as the next guy, but I think they know what they're doing here. But let me know down in the comments section, do you agree with my takes or do you disagree with how they're handling the release cycle for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video because it does a tremendous amount of good for the channel, helps me make more videos like this in the future, and it is just very much appreciated.
With that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.